Hey, welcome. Welcome to Mud to the Mansion. I'm Apostle Sandra Hatton, and this is Pastor Stephanie Johnson Rice. Hey. My baby, my friend, my prayer partner, my sister in the Lord. And I've had her on here one of the first, I think the first podcast I did. Mm -hmm, you did. But she was just really, we just came on that day, I think, just to let people know what's going on and just for, well, she was just my moral support. Right. But uh, I brought her on today because. We're going to deal with some issues, and uh, this is a book, this is the Main Strip Therapy, and uh, I'll post it on my page where you can, if you want to purchase it, you'll be able to purchase it. Uh, it's an amazing book. It tells a truth. Sometimes we, uh, I know y'all see on Facebook, and she's, uh, she does, she's, she's really an evangelist. She, she, she supports anything that's God's. She's just, she's just one of those people. Uh, her character is is something serious. It's just really she has such a beautiful character. She can be she can be uh, happy look over here. She can be uh, comedian. She is so much to her. So uh, you don't never sometimes you know sometimes I don't know what all of them will get when I get her, but right. I know I'm gonna get her. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so it's some things that uh, that I wanted to ask uh, Pastor Stephanie that y'all didn't know about that uh, really touched me when I start reading the manuscript of a book. Um, I got a book somewhere. I got some much stuff. Mm -hmm. I, some of it's in the shed and some of it's in the house. I, I, I'm trying to get my library straightened out now, so I had to grab a manuscript. But um, when you was younger, you were bullied. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, uh, in the book, it talks about how she was bullied and how she um, didn't say anything and just kind of took it. And, uh, and we want to today. We're going to deal with anger. We're going to deal with rejection. We're going to deal with abandonment. We're going to deal with some things that uh, handicap us and keep us from going into purpose. Yeah. Uh, we don't understand, but the things that happen to us as kids and childhood and and how we're parented affects us a lot in life. And uh, we have to go back and allow God to heal us yeah. and fix our brokenness. Yeah. And uh, she named this book therapy because she say it helped her get free. Yeah. She it she was she was really writing herself to freedom right. by the Holy Spirit. So, Pastor Stephanie, tell us about um, what the bullying did to you. Okay, um, in the home, me and my mama had a complex relationship. Okay, I felt that she did not love me. Right, I would see the favor of the other my siblings mm -hmm. and um so i felt like if my mama didn't love me right then why am i going to speak against somebody that's bullying me because obviously i deserved it because whose own mama don't care for you that's right. that's yeah. unnatural and so um i got bullied to my face and i never would say anything and i remember one of my friends was like ain't no way i'm gonna sit there and let somebody talk to me in my face and i just slowly looked at her and i said I guess if you think that you're something of value, then you wouldn't, would you? I said, yeah. I didn't care about myself. Right. I didn't think that I was something to be cared for or important. So right. what they were saying was true. And then I took what they said out of their mouths and would go home and look in the mirror and rehearse what they said. And, it's so, and, and uh, that's one thing that, that I have to really break walls in mm -hmm. spiritually. Uh, at the church, uh, because I deal with people, because I had low self esteem. Yes, ma'am. Because you could say I was pretty, mm -hmm. but oh you could God. you could say I'm pretty a hundred times. But I always believe the fact that I was ugly. Right. That you say I'm ugly, you say I'm this, I'm stupid. Yeah. I believe that more than more I did than what was truth. And so, uh, your all those years with your mom, and you knew she had a problem with you and she treated you different and mm -hmm. she didn't like you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you went through that most of your life. Yeah. And then find out to way later on mm -hmm. that what the reason behind it was. Correct. And so uh, the uh, the bullying 
but the but the but it started at home with the, at, home. at home with why she won't accept me, right. why she don't love Correct. me. What do I need to do? Right. You know, mm -hmm. you know, if if I do something as good as the other one and then she don't say it, but she prays them, what what can, what I, can do? I do? And uh, and so tell about some of your experiences with that. Ooh. I know. <laughs> Listen, already as the oldest child, you got a lot of responsibility. Like, um, when she would have the other kids, it was like, they cry, feed them. And I would tell her, like, by this time, I'm trying to buy your love. But since I don't think you love me, yeah. I can be disrespectful. Right. I'm not saying that that's right. right. You know, the Bible says, honor right. and your honor mother, your father. father. Right. So don't come with the, the foolishness. Because right. we, we already know, okay? Right. But this is my this story. Is story. That's okay? right. So, I was disrespectful because you don't love me anyway. Um, you don't love me anyway. We'll come to that later uh, as to what happened. But, um, so I'm, I'm, you don't care for me, but I'm taking care of your kids, which makes it easier for you. Mm -hmm. So you have four other kids. Now, I, as they come up, I'm trying to kill them. Right. Because now yeah. this thing, I'm trying to build this anger. And murder. And, yeah. So that's I'm how murder is kill. born. That's yes. how murder is. is I, mean, I tell people, say, how does somebody just get up in the morning and just kill they like, such and such? Do this, do that. Up. It's because of what has built up over the years, yeah. and they don't deal with it. They don't talk about it, and it and and then it goes into rage. It goes from anger to rage, it to murder. And so those people don't understand that you have to deal with things that happen in your life. You have to deal with those emotions. You don't stay in those emotions mm -hmm. because if you live in your emotions, you're not gonna never have no, no life. Right. Because it, well, <laughs> because uh, uh, the emotions take away your faith. Yeah. I don't deal with emotions. I don't, and that's why I'm, I'm like I am. Yeah. That's why I, I enjoy my I enjoy my relationship with the Lord. I process it. Yes. Do you that. hurt me. You do, do something to me. I go in prayer. I lay on. I lay God's feet. I process it. Mm -hmm process it if it takes some days for me to be like okay correct i have my little time where i have to deal with it and after that it's over mm -hmm. i'm done with that you got to <laughs> man you got to move you on got forward got to keep moving forward and so but it's unhealthy not to deal with right. it because it will cause anger or bitterness it's a cancer inside of you so you're hurting now you hurt everybody that's everybody. around you anybody that come and, 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 and even if somebody trying to love you you, you can't receive it, it. You can't receive it because it's hard to love someone when you ain't never been loved, and it's and it's even more harder to be to be authentically loved by parents and then the not have them. Right? You know, so it, it works both ways. It does. But but so coming back to that with you was now this anger and resentment has come in because now for one I'm gonna say this. When you make children parents over your kids, it takes their childhood. And when you put responsibility, oh, it's your job to watch them. Go change them. Go get up out. Go do this. It's not right because that's not their responsibility. Now you're training them to take you to to do your position and not allow them to be the child that they are. Mm -hmm. And so. And so it really that even made you even mad because you mad. now you working like you yeah, working. I told her I didn't have these kids. Right. I said these are not my kids. I said you had these kids, so why do I have to help you feed them? And like Stefano, I had one, one a miscarriage after him and another topic pregnancy after that. And he was like, I'm glad you didn't have the kids because I didn't want to be the one to take care of. Them. I said number one, who said you were gonna be taking care of my kids? <laughs> I said, you see that in families, but I'm not about to do that because it was done to me. Right. And I tried to kill them. Right. Mm -mm. right. I'm not doing that because right. I know what that feels like. Right. I'm not saying that your sibling, your kids cannot help their siblings. That's right. But We're not when I'm parenting it. them, right. though, because even my sisters, and I'm going to need y'all to understand, me and my mama, we, we resolve these issues after right. our experience. Right. But back then, no, I, I had love for her, but hate for her. Yeah. If that I makes understand. sense. I do. Okay. I so in that, you don't care for me, but you want me to do this for you. But, every but the whole time as a kid, you cry out. When you see I me, need help. Can you yeah, see I me? need help. I need help. I need to be I'm a child. Hurting. I right. need to I'm be hurt. protected. Right. I need to be cared for. Right. I need to be fed. Mm. And Lord, so it came out to where, like, even Sandra will be like, 
you really were another mother to me. Mm-hmm. You were like you were not just my sister. You were literally another mother. And for somebody to, to for her to say that, see that, and say that means something. Yeah. Because a lot of people just be selfish. Right. Because I'm gonna tell you what my with my own kids. I made my oldest son. I would say, hold his hand, do this. You know, watch him. Mm-hmm. Don't let him get hurt. Mm-hmm. You get you right inside with him. You better watch mm-hmm. him. And later on, when it got older. My God, he didn't know how to transition out of being a daddy role right. to being a brother. Mm-hmm. He was being still a brother, to... but he was still, in a sense, still. being a father. And then when he, when, my, when his brother wanted to be his own person, it kind of and I and I even see to this day my the 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 bond that they have they're exactly one year apart. Yeah. So the bond that they have. It's something because my middle son loves him, yeah. not only as a brother, but he loves him in a sense and look up to him in a father sense because he, that's where he learned from. Because yeah. he was, that's where he learned yeah. his stuff from. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Lord, look what I did. But I was we taught that I didn't know no better. Know. That, you know, that's that's not nothing. I mean, like we said, we're not saying don't say, watch him, don't let him get hurt. Right. You know, let him get rolled, stuff like that. But to just babysit them, them the to parent. just be the parent, that's just so unfair right. to that child because that child never gets to experience who they are. Right. They never get to be a kid. They never get to to to, to tap into their own identity. Yeah. Because right now there. they now they're operating out of yours because they doing what you should be doing. Yeah, correct. And that's hard. And then some mothers have to work, and some fathers have to work. So then sometimes the responsibility falls on the other siblings, mm-hmm. but. The word tells us all things we need to have a balance. Have, amen. Yes, but, uh, right. Uh, amen. We all things we need to have a balance. Yes. But getting back to this, and the reason why I'm coming off and going back with Pastor Stephanie like this is because I want to give her a moment. And at the same time, I want y'all to understand uh, the teaching that's coming with this. Mm-hmm. But because I want y'all to... to uh, I've been around Pastor Stephanie now for years. And, yeah. And, and uh, I said, come and spend night at the house with me. Yeah. And she said, okay, I will. Uh, and this was she said, I'll come, I'll come Monday. I yeah. said, okay. And uh, I had someone that I had to counsel that was dealing with anger. And I said, you can help me counsel this person to deal with anger. And when she started to tell me the anger that she had, and started to tell me her story and, and the stuff she had went through, I was mm-hmm. like, I didn't you didn't know that. that. You've done, been through all this. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, God, now I understand. But uh-huh. she can be on Facebook posting something, and people take it totally the other yes, way. And I'd be ma'am. like, dang, what she's saying. But I know her. And sometimes when you know a person, you know, you have to really know a person know yes. at, when they playing, when they venting, when they not venting, when they just talking. You know, and make and, and, and there's nothing. And that's but, why you have access, right? Because <laughs> I cut off access when people act like they don't understand. Right. Okay, you don't have to understand fully, right. but you grace me the same way I grace in your foolishness. You know, right. what I'm saying? a lot of right. people do a lot of foolishness because I should I be able to be me anyway. Cause you, you. you but right. when I'm me, then all of a sudden the dough swaying off the hinges because you gone. Yeah. So I don't spend the night with everybody. Right. I don't spend time with everybody. Right. Because one thing that I've realized, even in the relationship with me and my mom, um, if, if I say something, then they'll be like, oh, my God, you don't need to do that. You only got one mama. Well, if she's mistreating me, then I don't need to. <laughs> okay? Okay. Everybody does not have a good relationship with their mom, and that's what I need right. people to understand. Right. Because it's like you're trying to throw guilt on them. Right. It's not a good relationship. Period. Yeah. They don't need your two cents if it's not helping them because they've been through enough because their mother does not care. Right. And people can say, and I hear people say, well, it don't matter to me if my mama wasn't there. It don't matter to me if my daddy wasn't there. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's I'm telling you. You care. You might have crusted it over till it hardened to where you don't yes, feel. Yes, yes. But you care. Why? Because that's natural mm-hmm. for your parents to be. It's still. I still look at people sometimes in the way that their mama will love on them and be like, oh, my God. That is beautiful. Yeah. But we didn't have that. Okay. But people need to shut up sometimes if what you're saying ain't benefit. 
Right. You only got one mom. I was just do it. So you, you know what I'm saying? It, it yeah, irritates yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I, foolishness, especially of believers, because you would think you would exercise wisdom. Right. Because even when even the Bible says, "Love thy, uh, love thy mother, mother and father." Mm -hmm. You know, and to cherish them long be life. The Bible tells us, and it don't say whether she raised you, or she didn't. Right. It don't say whether your it's father. Like honor. What I say, honor them, no matter mm -hmm. what they did. Honor, honor them, and. Uh, we still post all of them. I told my son, uh, and I told his daddy, uh, matter of fact, Sunday, he came uh, by the restaurant, and I said, uh, and I told him, I said, uh, you know, I even told the kids uh, early on in life, you know, that sometimes a person best is absolutely nothing. Yeah, boy. And you just got to, <laughs> honestly, sometimes a person's best. It's absolutely, absolutely yeah, nothing. They just took it. Sometimes they ain't got nothing to give. Just go I'm on. sorry. I have, it's yeah. been times I've been sitting in the house with them and checked out. I'm in here, <laughs> but hey, I ain't in here, and I ain't got nothing to give. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, we have to be real about that. That You understand what I'm saying? Sense. There's no, the children don't come with instruction manuals. You know, you figure it out as you go. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't really been parent it correctly you won't you can you can say i'm not gonna never be this to my kids but you always end up being the very thing you that say you, you ain't gonna be to your children you because that's all you know to be and so you know I, and so i know i know I, I got wisdom in it now because i've been through so much i've raised i, I was a kid raising a child raising children i was on my own at a real young age you know a lot of people know i said a lot ago but so i understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. and, and, and so, and and, and y'all understand why she was treated that way in a little bit. Because when we get more into the story, you'll understand why she was treated this way. But when you're a child, and you don't, and you little, you know, like some kids mm -hmm. have been conceived in rapes, mm -hmm. and when the parents see the child, they, don't want they see the rapes and they don't like the child. Or some kids, some parents was heartbroken by the fathers. And they take it out on the children. And the children suffer because they won't let them see their daddy. They won't let them see their mamas. Because of the experience that they had. That has nothing to do nothing to with do. the child. And so uh, the reason why this, this um, podcast is so important is because Pastor Stephanie uh, has Peculiar Princess. When, uh, and, and, and she's beautiful. But to go through life and don't realize you're beautiful till you're 45. Right. To 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 rehearse all the things that others have said about you and got and, and been and broken and got low self esteem and, and 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 seeing yourself out of the eyes of other people. other people and and a lot of people right now is still sitting at home, Pastor Stephanie, suffering in silence yes. from rape, from right. abuse, from abandonment, from parent feel like a parent. Didn't love you like they did the other right. siblings. And I found out about my own mom that she said her mom never once told her she loved her. So she didn't know how to love her. Wow. She, my mama love was, I'm going to buy you this. I'm going to buy you that. We didn't want for nothing. She'll buy you. Right. But she, but she, she didn't, she didn't, she, she wouldn't say, say I'm sorry. And she learned to say I love you uh -huh. later on. Yeah. But when I sat down and heard my mother's story. I was like, oh my God, mama. And I was like, oh my God, she's never really been loved. Mm -hmm. Even with my father, he he loved her, but he cheated on her. When he married her, she was 18, he was 64 years old. So this, she was like a child. No, you didn't say he loved her, he, but he, he cheated on uh, her. No, well, people look at me, people, no, listen. Yeah, no, yeah, I I'm talking agree. Type of, you know what I'm saying? No, listen to me, yeah. hear me. Yeah. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I have said that mm -hmm. about me and my own husband. Right. But people have looked at me like, ain't no way you sit in my face telling me he loved you and he cheated on you. Well, I can't even you. My daddy, even when he's last, even when, even when my daddy had dementia all the time, I always till he took his last breath. Every time I went to see my dad, he always say, well, Francis. <laughs> Hi, friends. Tell her boyfriend, send me for ten dollars. You need to be ten dollars. <laughs> My dad was a clown. He would keep. But he, he yeah, said, man. he, he. I'm gonna tell you something. He didn't catch it. Yeah. He didn't catch it in the marriage. My mama wanted to make sure he was happy. Yeah. My mama 
If you want a boat, you got a boat. If you want a truck, you got a truck. My mama, she made sure she worked two jobs. My daddy worked had business. My mama, my dad would come in and throw money on the bed. My mama said, I don't want your money, Sam. Get it and go on. I don't want it. My mama didn't want his money. She wanted his time. I just needed I you that to later. know that that's a whole word, though. Yeah. Because most people look at me like I'm crazy. I love my mm -hmm. son, yeah. Stefano Darrell Arnett Johnson. Shout out. I love him. <laughs> yeah. But what he had to go through with me, yeah. I loved him, but I hurt him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because of things that I was going through, right. things that I had gone through, things that. But Come on. I, I love him. Through. That's right. I but love my kids, I but I but they went through something. Yeah. So why we be sitting there talking about love don't hurt? The devil is a liar, and do. his mama it is too. That's the, the truth, now it does. Love it does. hurts. God yes, chases do. whom he loves, don't he? Yes, he chasing do. and don't yes, feel it, good. It sure okay, don't. I'm just I just wanted to bring that out. Come on, because people act like step crazy when she say, "Right, he loved me." Yeah. Carlos Rice loved me. He didn't know how to treat her. But he loved he, her. I love him. He had a love for her. He did. He did. I know. Oh, I, know. I know he did. Trust me. I'm sorry. I'm I know my telling the world. Dead, honestly. So regardless of what is said about right. me even now, my deuces love you <laughs> and forgive you. But Carlos Rice loves Stephanie Denise. Yes, it's true. And he's still true. my dog. He's still my best friend. That's right. I will still help him. I still check on him. Not going to disrespect nothing he got going on. But that's my dog. That's the truth. Period. And, I, and, that's, and that's love. Because when a person loves you. They gone. You good? Yeah, he do. You need such and such. Are you all right? And he do. You check. You know, that's even uh, during the week. And you treat people the way they treat you. You know, so you accommodate them the way they accommodate mm -hmm. you. And it's not, it's, and even sometimes in relationships, people think, well, she loved that one more she do that. No, sometimes. No. I treat them the way they treat me. Right. If you, if you're more talking to me, then I'll be more talking. I you accommodate. Do you understand what yes, I'm saying? I do. It's not that you. Yes, it's I, not do. A, I do. Right. I do. I do. I do. And so and so, the the anger, the not being able to be a kid, having to try to raise help with your siblings, the constantly. Uh, bullying mm -hmm. when you go to school. You know, some people got a safe place. Well, you know, when I go to this place, um, I, I, I get, I, I yeah, really yeah, get yeah. loved. I, I uh, ain't Willie May was. I got loved at home. Ain't Willie May was really my yes, real safe place. Uh -huh, I got you. I, I throw my, I, I, she lived next door. Um, uh, my daddy's uh, um, uncle's wife, my ain't Willie May, and I would go up there and go in there and sit on. She worked at the kitchen at the, um, at the school. A head store. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was fire sucking a bottle. My daddy bought a bottle and pet milk, and they dare not take my bottle. And my own head home. Home. I was fire. Fire. And, so did. and, fire. and, fire. and, and uh, I was going to the cafeteria, and when they would put me in the get rid of she said, You need to let that bottle go. I'm like, mm -hmm. My daddy gave my, daddy, oh, um, my, my mama would volunteer. She'd be so embarrassed and mad. She'd get that bottle. Mm -hmm. I cried, my daddy bring a bottle more milk. So my aunt. Willie May said, you can't come make up here until you get rid of that bottle. So I would <laughs> throw the bottle behind the head bush and go in the house with him. <laughs> oh, sleep. And then you would come, come back out and get your bottle. She said, hey, you can't come back no more. I said, oh, no. I looked at that bottle. I said, you got to go. I, you got to uh -huh. go. I want Eric Willie May Bill. And yes. I, I let the bottle go. So I understand. That safe place. It's not that was my there. safe place. It's but to this, there. but the look to your story, it was like you didn't have a safe place. People because saw school what was, was going not on. your place. Home was not your place. Where do you go? Right. If and so I did. I just had to go inside myself, and that's the thing. Jeez, did you hear that? Even when I wrote the book, myself, myself, and I did. that's a bad place to go. That, that, ooh. Woo! Sometimes Lord. I wasn't safe in there either. Mm, we're going to um, deal with that later. Come on. But mm. even when I wrote the book, and I let my mama read it first. And she was like, it makes me sound so bad. And I, but you were. But of course, there's perceptions. That's how we see. See, right. Okay. And so um, I let her read it first, and then I told her. Anybody that got anything to say about what I write? Because I put in that book stuff. I ain't told nobody, okay? Yeah. No human, okay? I said, anybody got an issue with anything in this book, you send them to me. I said, because people saw what was going on and, and didn't say, say nothing. You better not say nothing now. I got some words for you like you got words then. And I meant it. Yeah. Because to see stuff going on mm -hmm. and you don't step in. I 
care for my people. And the thing about it, the suffering in silence, because when you're suffering in silence, yeah. it's a sore. It is. That thing hurts so bad, you can't speak it. Yeah. I know how that feels. Yeah. And when you get the courage to speak it, that means God has given you the courage to get free. Then you don't supposed to care about how nobody's thinking right. about it. And I don't. Because it's your truth. And I don't. And I won't. And I'm yeah. starting on it's therapy too. And it's worse than this one. And I'm like, do we have to put all of this out? <laughs> we don't have to put all of this. But after writing this one yeah. and getting the calls and the texts and the inboxes, yeah. I didn't know you went through all that. I done went through some of this. I need to meet with you. But one woman had told me, this book is going to change lives. I'm yeah. thinking, honey, this mine. You know what I'm saying right now? I'm not thinking be, about. I didn't even know my son I, I had been bullied. My, my youngest was like, yeah, I'm bullied. And, and I was like, what? Wow. Your youngest one? Yeah, and it it really, people don't understand how bullying it traumatizes it does. a child. Mm -hmm. How it, and most kids do that because they going through something worse than you And is. that's correct. And they trying to make, they still they, feel better. So they figure if they put something on you, then people won't look at them. Right. And it's just an ongoing cycle. You know, it's a, it's, it's a, 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 a unhealthy environment they live in. So that's why they acting out. And instead of us, and we as people, and that's one thing even about it, uh, us as, as as ministers, when when we when God bring them to us, and uh, they and God start to smoothen out the rough edges, they're hurt. They kicking us. We we trying to help them, but but they still fighting yes, us. And I'm like, Golly Lord, this 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 ninja about to box me to death. <laughs> oh, man, I'm just doing what you're telling me to do now. I'm about to. And but but God and then God said, Yeah, but you did me the same way yes, because you was did. hurt. And you and you and you didn't you didn't you didn't know how to deal with you. And and, and I had to unlock all this yes, stuff I and did. clean you mm -hmm. and, and still cleaning you. Yep. So, you know, come on, the same grace I gave you, mercy I gave, come on, let's just let's just let's just see him through this. And a lot of times when we get to the hurt part of them, we don't want to be bothered. Right there. But you would never get to the you would never get to the diamond unless you go yeah, through the there. You can, you're not going to get to it. So, it, everything, and it may seem like the, the stuff that you went through, because it gets deeper. Mm -hmm. uh, why, Lord? Boy, you know, we always say that, but why, Lord? I'm so mad at him. Really? Really, I was, God? I was talking to him while I really mad at him. have to endure this yeah. one? And, 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 uh, but when you start, when God start delivering you, and you start coming into your true authentic identity. Mm -hmm. Not the one we made, mm -hmm. but the one God tear down and start making yeah. back like he made from the original. Yeah. When before you was in your mother's womb, I spent time Correct. with your spirit and, and, and I formed you yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. And he started getting you back to that one. Then you start to realize those experiences really just make you even better at that one. Oh, thanks And he never he never intentionally meant for you to go through right. that. But see, I didn't know that. Yeah. I was so he said him. I used to do anything to cuss him out. And see, cuss yeah. words. Cuss words. Cuss words in front of people. Yeah. I was on Clemson University campus. And I don't remember what happened. And I was screaming at the sky, cursing him in the middle of the campus. But then this is my thing. Where was the church? Where were the believers? Because people are strategically assigned to you. Mm -hmm. I would be at one church crying. I'm talking about crying. I'm talking about crying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll be okay, baby. It'll be okay, baby. No, honey. The true. Holy Ghost was on me. Where was my help at? Right. And that's the thing. God assigns people to me, and yeah. even on Facebook. You he'll said assign like people that. to me. Now you got no I ain't even met them. Yeah, I ain't even met these people on Facebook. But he'll be like, pray for them. And he'll be like, no. And I'll start praying. He'll be like, no, no, go on the audio in the messenger and pray for them. And then people be like, I don't even know who you are, but I know that this is God because nobody else said, I don't know them, but it's right. people strategically. And that's why we got to be on our post and we not. We so concerned about, I don't know why we so concerned about anything but God. But the way you broke it down, no, I had to be torn down to be built back up. up. So it. the way that I used to take what they said and rehearse it in the mirror, now I take that word and say Come it in the now. mirror. Come so on. you can't, but that's what the thing. When I was broken with nobody, they didn't care. No, I'm, everything was good. But now that I'm built up, now people got a problem. Make that make sense to me. Why are you trying to demean oh, me now? Yes, Why are you trying to talk down to me now? Why are you not celebrating me now? That right there. Don't play with me though. <laughs> because I done found out who I am. So right. I am indestructible. That's right. I am, as one woman told me earlier today, un 
touchable. Yeah, and that's the did. thing. Once you realize who you are, right, people are right, they right. intimidated, baby. And the thing about it is this. Once, the more you, every day that you spend with God, God makes you over. He does. God makes you Now, that's fact. Different. He said you're a new thing. And every is, day that you sing the presence of God, that you is. read your word, that you talk to God, that you spend the time with God. And some people don't understand the person you knew that 10 ain't years me. ago, last week, is God. That ain't me. This is a whole nother. Why? Because because I'm walking with him. I'm yeah. moving with him. I'm every day I'm on the altar. Yeah. I don't I don't have to put those up. No, I say, God, here I am. It's me. What's in me now that needs to be oh. fixed? What's in me now that needs to be purged? What in me? Come on, help me. Let's get this. What do you me. want me to do? Because I got no sister. No, I can't make a decision. I can't do anything. Right. But I think God is not. It won't work. And he will show you and he will talk right. to you and he will reveal to you. Because ain't no way that God revealing what, what somebody else to somebody else. But, but can you believe me when you was broken? You no. know, when you was When I was bus? broken, I was even mad. Even when you was on the bus, can you remember even as a kid? I'm going to say, say this to you. You might not have realized it. But even as a kid on that bus in the house with your mom. Mm-hmm. And all the stuff you went through. It, most of the people that or things that was around you were intimidated because the enemy already knew. Right. Correct. He he started That's why I was when set he up came like out. That. Mm-hmm. He already knew. Mm-hmm. I gotta get this right. I gotta get this on her because if this chick find out, and at um, a young age, mm-hmm. hey, uh, let's just let's just let's, let's 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 work on her now. Right. Let's work on her now. And a lot of people understand that. The enemy comes for your assignment. Mm-hmm. The does. enemy comes for your assignment. And you and, and, and it's your assignment. It, it, it's what you go through. It has everything to do with your assignment. Yeah. And so uh you was on the key on the bus, just mm-hmm. but you couldn't see you spiritually like we couldn't see right. when we was little. No. We couldn't see. No. We didn't know we were the target. Right. Because of the assignment. Correct. You you know, we don't we didn't you know you yes. didn't know. Yes, yes. And so you didn't know the whole time the enemy was tearing you down, you were the opposite of what right. he was saying. <laughs> but you just didn't know. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And so, Correct. And so you know and so now and now that you can embrace it mm-hmm. and know it. Yeah. And your facade already said, okay. I am who I am. Mm-hmm. I can wear yellow hair. Yep. I can wear green. Yep. I can rock. I you can rock I'm anything and, do. and be confident. Yes, ma'am. And, and that's just being your unique self. Yes, ma'am. And so that right there, to some people, it is. is it that's what one of my friends told me. Because I'd be like, golly, I just started this new job. Because you I walked you? in. Some of the guys are polite, but the chick's just looking at me. And she said, you intimidating. <laughs> I said, what? I said, I don't do nothing. She was like, you don't have to. You she was like, yourself. you rock whatever hell. You rock whatever clothes you want to rock. She was like, you are self-confident. She was like, you intimidate. And I never look at it like that. It because I feel like that when you are yourself, you know, when you broken, you know, I say misery loves company. Yeah. So you can tell the miserable people. Yeah. But then when you're free, you want others to be free. When right. you're happy, you want right. others to be yeah. happy. Yeah. So if I'm self-confident, I'll be like, well, shoot, what they got to do with you? I ain't got nothing to do with you and yours, but it does. And so I just be like, and like you said, every day that scripture, behold, I make all things new. Come on. Behold, I make all things new. Mm-hmm. No matter what, I'd be like, God, Lord, I thank you for making but all you, things but new. But what you bring to the room is like, I love you. What you bring, I'm telling you, I'm I'm just being honest. Mm-hmm. And not just because you're in here, because I said it. I know you do. You're not. I know you do. What you bring to the room is you're going to bring joy, you're going to bring you're gonna bring a little everything into the room. And it's like, okay, she here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and, and, and one, thing I, one thing I love about you is. You let people be themselves. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about every part of themselves. I know. Because I've, I've had my episodes where I'd be like, okay. Uh, but I see me and you. And you said, I see and you I said, and me. I said, oh, I'm sorry about that. Because uh-uh. you said, oh, I would have did worse. I'm sorry. Oh, one thing, one thing, something happened to her, so I can't speak on it. We, right, we I can't speak on it, but I was like, I love you so she much. She was right behind me. She was like, I said, what did you? I said, mm-hmm. she said, I'm trying to help them. Yeah. I already know. If I said, okay. And, you know, and we, but, you know, people think that. That because we're believers, because of our um, covering, which is apostle and pastor, mm-hmm. that we don't believe that we ain't human. We don't have, we don't feel, or we don't right. just like y'all do. You know, I, 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 it's only by His grace right. that He released on me to deal with things yeah. the way I deal with them, and because 
I've, I've come so far to, to see God kill Sandra. Mm -hmm. To go back and dig that mental patient back mm -hmm. up. I'm not going to let you take me back to Thank Egypt. You. It's not. It's not that serious, right. you know. Uh, 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 it's too much. It's too much on the line. Yeah. And so, and with you, but but what 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 about your story? And it was another thing you said here. You said um, it was about being. Let me see if I find my page. Okay. It was about. Let's see if I find because I tell you, this one was about parenthood, but. And this was about being feeling unworthy. Yeah. Tell us about how you feel about unworthy and and a, and a wounded woman. Tell us about those two things, right quick. I'm gonna find. I didn't um, mm. feel like I had no words because and I don't know why. It was my, misunderstood. My mama. That's even. That's what she going through now. Misunderstood. It's me misunderstood. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and that's why I was sitting there like I don't know why. I want to focus on my dad. My dad is working most of the time. Child, Glenn Raven, he worked at Glenn Raven for the longest. So he'd be at work and then like, he would fix some cars or whatever. So I don't know why I was trying so hard to get my mama to care for me. And then people would be like, remember what we said? They would be like, she loves you. She just don't know how to show you. Show it, right. But still, until she how. told her story, yeah, you didn't it made know. perfect sense. Yeah, Which y'all know we're going to reveal before really, we leave here. Just, but yeah. I was like, oh my God. But, and that's why I also, like, me and Step got a relationship like none other. And people tell him, your relationship with your mom is weird. I said, Step, they just don't have a relationship with their mom. Right. Because, what, right. like I said, he went through oh, stuff yeah. with me, with him being my child. And he made me so proud because one time he said, um, I can't remember what we was talking about. And he was like, if I could be as half as much as you are wow. with half your flaws, I'd be proud. Because he done seen the worst. We didn't have to sleep wow. in my van. Didn't like, didn't that. have no place to live. Like, I didn't have enough money to get both of us something to eat. So I got him something to eat and said, Baby, go ahead and eat. And he was like, Well, where's yours? I said, I'm not hungry. He knew I was hungry. And so I said, but you, So he ate with tears going, you know, because he knew I would whip his eat. Because I knew he had to go to school. He had to, I go to work. I could fast. But he's been <laughs> there. He will tell people, I remember her working two and three jobs to take care of me. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Don't say nothing about me in front of Steph. That's all I'm going to say. And if you don't know, now you know. Because he does not play about Stephanie. And right. even when he was getting bullied, the first time he got bullied, I didn't go to no teacher. I didn't go to no parent. I didn't go to no adult. I went to the child. And was yelling at that child in the Varina's lunchroom. And he was climbing under the table trying to get away from me. Oh, Lord. So Steph stopped telling me. He got bullied worse later on. But he stopped telling me. Right, because you know how to handle it. Right, it, it because I was... It triggered your bullying. And I was... And so yeah. I'm trying to protect him, but that made it worse. Because yeah. he didn't tell me right. that he was being bullied. And so that's what I'm saying. When you are not fully healed, and then you're trying to raise a child and still have that child be... I you felt bad like when we start when talking. When you ain't truly healed, and you're trying to raise I children. felt bad with some of the stuff that we had. To, but me and Step Boy, sometimes we'll get into it. And it's like... And Carlos used to be like, are y'all going to be okay? Because he me. And I'd be like, yeah, we're going to be fine. And he talked me one time. <laughs> I still don't remember now, but I don't believe he lying. I, I, I ain't calling him no liar. But we got into it. He he said, you hit me with a two-piece. He said, after you punched me twice. I said, I did not. He was like, Mama, yes, you did. And he still I talking did. about that. And I said, well, I must have. I said, because you don't be lying to me. But it's like he saw some things and he is like me. So we hold each other accountable. Right. He'll be like, Mama, you did this. Now, I didn't agree with it. But just. So, so, so the things that you dealt with were uh, also a depression. Oh, we listen. I was a functioning depression, I, except for one time. Now, one time I checked out, and Sandra mm -hmm. was like, Now you're gonna have to, your child playing outside, you're gonna have to snap out of this because all I did was sleep. That's all I did, and then just sit in the room, take Jeez. him to school, come back, sleep, pick him up, sleep. Like, I wasn't even interacting with him, but most of the time, I was functional. Right. I was depressed, but I was still going through going the motions. Through the still right. going through the motions. Still right going through the motions. Deal with yeah. depression, but working and right. trying to raise kids. Yeah. And, and they hurting, and they got all this, you know, they done been abandoned. They done been raped. They done been uh, verbally, physically abused. They trying to find somebody to love them. They keep going to the trash can, yeah. picking stuff out of the trash, trash can, can, love them. And because, they, because that person ain't never experienced love, so now... You got somebody that still don't know how to love you because they've been abused. And yeah. You don't know how to love nobody because 
uh, real, honestly, the love that we have before we meet Christ is a manipulating love. Right. It's a self-seeking love. It ain't no. It ain't. It ain't real love. Right. So you know, it be years we go through to why we want to be loved, but never even, even know, what, know it what, it what it is. Because love don't hurt. It's not puffed up. It don't keep no record. It holds no wrong. But that's it's a long thing. suffering. We it's kind, it experience it's genuine. So and we know we ain't really. You sometimes know. we're experiencing because we don't recognize that we mess it up. We self sabotage. Right. Because some people have gotten used to that chaotic love, that drama love, that. They don't think you love this, they cuss them out. Right, right, right. They don't think you love right, it unless they uh, uh, coming in and taking what you got. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, for some reason, I, I'm, I, I, I did it. I have done it in the past, you know, when I was younger. I would get a project. Somebody, when well, he needs some help, I got on it real quick. No, you better have some money and you better have some help yourself. I, I got, as I learned, I, I learned real quick. Not I don't want project. no project. I want the project to already be fixed. Yeah. Okay. But you know, we're people. Yeah, that's pro- what women do. I can, I can change them. them. But I no, can, you can't. If God yeah. can't change them, you ain't can't change them. Correct. Uh-uh. But that's it. That's what we, <laughs> when we don't recognize. To see. I'll see families out on jobs that I've done and see both the parents work together for the good of the child, whether they were together or not. Right. And that's saying a lot because yeah. a lot of them, oh, my God, They're the chaos comparing. that they're causing on yeah. the child. But to see it and you can recognize it because you know what it looks like. Like I knew what love looked like even when I wasn't experiencing it, but I knew what I was experiencing was love. Right. Even when I was whoring around, I knew right. that man on top of me did not care about me. Right. And that's when it's bad. When you're using Ooh. a vice as an escape, Ooh. you still Say can't it. escape. What? Say crazy. It now. And then just sitting there like, yeah, what? It's real now. It's yeah. real now. Yeah. To the bed. It's What's real the now. What's the point? <laughs> so you giving yourself, and I told Stel, and he laughed at me, but he was like, no, mama, you for real. I said, one day I was sitting there talking to him about when I used to be a whore. I said, don't do it. I said, you're better than that. I said, Tr- strive to be a virgin until you're married. Strive right. to be. Stri- now, strive but I be. also showed them how to put a condom on. Right. Now. It was on a weenie. But I showed them. <laughs> and I know two, that's right. Two of my, two of my goddaughters <laughs> was there and they was like, I'm so glad you're not my mama. But no, you weren't going to. Yeah, I said, I, said, I don't want mama. you to do this. Thank but you if mama. you do this, then you need to do this. That's right. But I, I told him so that he could be the best version of himself but i didn't want him to have to experience anything that i had experienced not knowing y'all i can't remember the um the science and what it's called and who was preaching it but that some stuff is passed down through the dna right generational curses got to be broken sure it's some renunciation that needs to be gone i mean renouncing that needs to be going on that's from true. what is going down through the bloodline that's true them things get stronger man listen they get stronger <sighs> as you go further down the lineage and so one prophet told me your life is so hard because i was determined my son not gonna go through this my son not gonna go through this mm-hmm. my son not gonna go through this mm-hmm. and so it was coming against me hard because I'm like, we're not doing this. We are covering him. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just wanted to make somebody who, and he was, and I was glad that he had a happy childhood. Oh my God, I can still see him smiling and stuff. Even in the midst of things we went through. Because yeah. mine, I don't, people's like, I want to go back to being a child. No, nope, no, thank you. You can have that. I'm not, not at all. None of it. I only had one. None of it. Yeah, I, I, I think all, all the, the, the worst times I've had, um, there's one place in my life when me and my sisters and my mom and dad was together out there on Don Bridge Road. And when I really when it was times I really wanted to check out, mm-hmm. I would cease those moments. For some reason, God had taught something to, the Holy Spirit something had taught me how to go back and just like I'm sitting like I'm in the I'm in the yard with with my parents. Mm-hmm. Like like everything was back normal yeah. before all the chaos oh, right. happened. Uh-huh. And it was, it, I, and I just said, if I didn't have those moments, mm-hmm. what would I have to, right. to go back to, right. to kind of try to come out of this Right. Thing? You know, because you have some things just pull you out of certain things mm-hmm. at certain times. Mm-hmm. And that was my thing that I would try to go back to that, that place in my life where I would, everything made yeah, everything sense. Where, where, where I was safe. You know, mm-hmm. that place. Yeah. So. In this, you said, depression begins with disappointment. Mm-hmm. When disappointment festers in our soul, it leads to discouragement. So discouragement and disappointment leads to depression. To depression. And, and your dis- discouragement 
and disappointment didn't come from things you done. Right. It came from things other people did too. Mm-hmm. And it would just trip me out because me back then I was vengeful. So if you did something to me, I was gonna do something to you, and that included Joy saying I didn't have no, cause listen, I didn't think I was worthy. I didn't think nobody cared about me, so I didn't care about myself. Right, right. So at one point I was suicidal only, and then I became suicidal and homicidal. We are gonna kill this whole family, and then we're gonna see, go to school, and we're gonna, we're gonna kill the ones that bully me at school. So Mama had the gun. All right, let's see what the gun is. We taking care of all of this. And I wasn't killing myself at the end, though. Why? But in the plan, I still remember the plan. Right. You know, suicidal. And they said, why kids, y'all ain't trying to get up and go to school and shoot all the people in the school and do this and do that because they hurting. And people. And that's I hurt what, child that I hurt. That's Help your child acting crazy. Listen. The child hurting. Get to the root of the issue of the problem, not just beat them and go sit down. Find out, talk and to them, and let them talk back to you. Cause I was raised with did you? You better not say you bet not, Yeah, you don't. You don't express Do how what you I feel. Is what I say. And shut up. If I say you hurt you, I couldn't even say you really hurt my feelings. Right. Are you really hurting me when you say that? I wasn't allowed right. to say that. So just because we're the parents, oh, school, we give us the right to not right. communicate and let them be honest, so we'll know mm-hmm. how to. Stop hurting them or know how to get to the root of the, of the problem. Right. Or maybe somebody in the family hurting them. Right. Or maybe somebody they, you, you, when you they babysitting them hurting them. But they can't. And then, and, 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 and if you don't have the trust of your mother, the compassion of your, or the love that you want from your mother, especially if, who can you go to? If you can't go to your parents and say, hey, this happened. I feel like this. Who can you go to? And and nobody wants to go to somebody that's going to make them feel like, it's your fault. Right. What did you do? Right. Or, no. So, communication is the key. Always. You shouldn't get an attitude when your child tell you, you, you know, you, you wrong. Yeah. You hurt me when you cuss yeah. me out. You, you, you wrong. <laughs> you shouldn't get mad because you're the adult. Well, you don't, I'm the one feeding you well. I ain't asked to be here. You're supposed to feed me. Listen, you hurting me. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> do what you're supposed to do. Oh, come on now. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> people will judge people not knowing the full story, but right. also people so fake. If I'm telling you, listen, I thought I'd punch you in your throat, but I didn't. Like, people are just not authentic with themselves. Right. Like, even like I said, telling this right. with stuff that I hadn't told people. This but after is, that, this, y'all better get this I just got free. Stuff. Like, I don't, it don't even matter no more. Because once I finished that and sent that mug off, I experienced true freedom. So let's, that's it. And so let's deal with you. You got delivered from depression. Mm-hmm. You got delivered from anger. Mm-hmm. You got uh, delivered Whoring around from from uh, being permission. Yes. You got delivered from um uh abandonment. Yes. Because you felt I uh-huh. don't love. nobody want me. Don't nobody want mm-hmm. me. So my mama don't want. Why would, why would anybody want? Anybody want? Me? Anybody. Want anybody. Me? And you, if you can't take the word of a parent, it's hard to believe anybody, anybody else. Cause that's the foundation. That's the found. That's who's supposed to be feeding and nurturing and building you up to begin. And we're not. And listen, we're not persecuting her, talking bad against her mother. Because I'm gonna tell you why. Her mother went through more hurt than she, she went did. through. My mama did some things, but my mama went through hurt. Honestly, I wasn't so hurt. I was. I was. It, it took God ten years to prepare me for my mama to leave. Mm-hmm. She got real sick when she was 66 and getting ready to go. And I went for a Lord. He said he's 77. Yeah. And he let her live 10 more years. And all the way up to almost to her birthday. Yeah. But, and during that time, he was processing it for me. Mm-hmm. Because I have a hard time with yeah. somebody leaving me. I understand. And, but through the process, I learned from her. Mm-hmm. How she really... How her life was awful. But that's what I say. I don't even, was not, I don't even care if they think I'm persecuting her. This is not your story. But <laughs> write your own. And then I publish books. <laughs> or go on. get you a publisher. But you're not finna tell but me But she publish story. books. She write, publish. Yeah. All that. That's what people try to do. Because I told her, I said, I'm not gonna, I said certain things I'm not just going to even put in that book. She right. Said, you no, you need to put that in that book. This, this book right book here? Book. I can't wait. But that's why I say. It's always people that got something to say about your story. This is my story. Right. So me and Joyce and I have that out. This is where you lived. 
She's sitting in heaven right now. I saw them come to get her. So we all, she good. Like come I said, on. we took care of this before she passed. Right. And then I found out why she was treating me and like she was treating me. we get ready to get to why. Get ready but to my why. thing is, I'm not finna let you and nobody else tell me how to tell my story. I don't care what you think about it. I don't care how you feel about it. I got free and I'm going to stay free so you can be mad. Right, I'm that's the truth. I'm tired of folks always got something to say. I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, y'all. That's one thing about mud to the mansion. Mud to the mansion is about where you was, like versus where God didn't take you. Yeah, you exactly. Now. And uh, to be broken as a kid, to be broken as a teenager, to be broken as an adult, to be broken all the way up to 45. Boy, that's a lot of life being missed, and a lot of people, uh. Or existing, but they still not living mm -hmm. because of identity crisis mm -hmm. and because they've been hurt and they don't know how to allow God to. They don't know how to uh, cast their kids on God. Yeah. They don't know how to allow God to clean and clean and sweep them, sweep the rooms clean on the inside because it don't matter how cute you look on the outside. Uh -huh. If you broken <laughs> on the inside, baby, you a mess. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can't put on nothing right. that will hide it. Right. All you got to do is open your mouth. Because out of the mouth, the heart going to speak. Yeah, and it does. And so, uh, one thing, that's one thing I really, really noted. That's why God had me to do this podcast. Was to be able to get to mothers. Young mothers. Whatever age you are. People that's just hurting. Because the reason why the society is in a place we're in. It's because so many of us, mm -hmm. it's just hurt. Right. And we don't know how to deal with it. We don't know how to release it. We don't know how to process it. We don't know who to go to. Yeah. And you go to God. You go to people like us. You come. And I got class stretching flow. You lay out, pray. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will do what you do. Uh, it, but God wants you to be healed. God wants you to be whole. God wants you to go through the storm and not let the storm get inside of you. Right. I want you to understand that life gonna happen, but he's bigger than any situation, a circumstance that ever, you can ever get in right. or go through, and he'll bring you out. I'm talking about bring you out the fire, smell like no smoke. Now that's what he is. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm people that you, say, you don't, and you don't. I say yeah, but well, hey, but God, but, honestly, it's just the Lord. He be showing. Hey man, it's just the Lord, and I've never had that problem. Coming up, I didn't really care about people's opinion about mm -hmm. me. Even when I was young, I didn't care. Hey, if you thought about me, mm, hey, who cares? I but your really mama loved I didn't, you I and stuff too. That's well, my mama, saying. yeah, my, my mama, my mama loved me, but she didn't. She didn't know how to love me. I know what you're saying. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But, but I would rather have. But I, but but and but like vice versa, what you had, mm -hmm. which is not always good either. <laughs> but it is. But it's not. It's I know what you're saying. Yep. I I had a, I, my mom and daddy, word was that bun. When they said something, they it did. was written in stone, baby. They did it. Mm -hmm. They, You know, it wasn't no. So, and my daddy strongly taught us, don't lie. Don't speak in properties. Don't. Yeah. Don't know. He didn't lie. Boys, men around us, none of that mess. If you dress my mom, you dressed as Miss Hatton. My daddy didn't play no games. Right. And so, uh. When my mom and dad separated and throwed us over in the hood. <laughs> and I'm 11. And I'm thinking these people looking at me like, you know, adults is looking at me like I'm 11. Yeah. No, he's looking at you like you 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 grown. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I was never prepared right. for this world. Gotcha. I was just prepared was for the sheltered. one. I was sheltered. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I didn't know. Got you, child. Anything. Yeah. Got you. And I had to learn all that on my mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. That's real. And baby, that's a that's lesson. Rough. No child should have to, have to. So I start treating my children. They were little, little. That's what you do. Dad, hey. She say, no, no, uh -huh. me, no. This there, so the run. They trying to pick you up. This right here. This is a pedophile. You got and pregnant like this, at. I talk. You got pregnant I pregnant at. at 12. Yeah. I had my First one at 13 and yeah. was in my own house, 14, going on 15 years yeah. old. So I I experienced some things that was just a child shouldn't, a Correct. teenager, nobody should ever even go through. Correct. So I understand. Gotcha. I understand trying to raise kids and you hurt. Mm -hmm. Because when you until you get hurt, a, a healthy mama is healthy children. Right. But when you're a hurt mama, you're going to produce hurt kids. Yeah. Because you don't have you a don't choice. Have it's going to go somewhere, and it's going to go to the closest thing around you. Most of the time, it's the kids, because yes. that's what's around you. Right. 
And so I know even when my children be acting out of context, I say, okay, Lord, you just get to that hurt in it. Yeah. He, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. be holy. He's going to be something they ain't never seen before. Fact. But, Lord, just get the hurt out of them. Because until then, it's just hard. You know what I mean? And that's, and that's what anybody. That's what people don't address, though. That's my thing. I can tell you what's wrong with me. After they, they ain't no good, they <laughs> hurt. Right. They, I they, can they tell you know he what's hurt. wrong with me and have to learn how to tell the good. Because like people can be like, what's wrong with you? Y'all say you want it from A to Z. But they be like, okay, what's good? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now I can list both sides because I'm my strengths and my weaknesses. Right. But now you got people who want to gloss over what's wrong, baby. I already see it. You ain't got to cover it up. This is what's wrong with me. And that don't make you no bad person. That just means that you got a process that you got to go through to deal with that if you want to deal with that because everybody don't want to. Right. Because healing is not easy. You're here that healing, but that process. Some days you mad, some days you numb, some days you glad, some days you act. You, it, but it's a process, yes, yes. and that's what some people don't realize. You think that thing is going to be instantaneous? He's going to take you through that process. But sometimes that, that process can be quick. It depends on you. Well, it depends on it depends on your. I don't say that because I just let people know that everybody's journey is different. Everybody's just right. Different. That's but, what I say. But it's but the more you press into him, the quicker it's going to get done. Okay, right now. It just depends on your relationship with God. And most people ain't there, so most time it ain't. Yeah, so most time it ain't if you don't go to him and you ain't sitting right. you ain't you ain't you ain't talking to but God. But then we ain't been taught that either. Yeah. Most of the time yeah. we've been taught how to do church. We do church way. Not kingdom. But we don't do kingdom. Right. Because we go to church. We sing on the choir. We pay the tithes. We do the outreach. But are you living at home? Because church is more than Sunday and Wednesday yes, and yeah. Saturday choir rehearsal. It's a lifestyle which impacts the others. And you bring heaven down into somebody's presence. That's One lady right. told me, she's like, you ain't like no Christian I ever knew. I said, I like that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Hallelujah. You. I said, because that's God. I said, it's not. About, I said, because if you knew me before. I knew God. Baby, you wouldn't be talking to me. You wouldn't be talking to me. And I understand when you said when you was hurting. And I know somebody might have took offense that me said when I was hurting. Where was the church? Because I remember. Oh, I mean I what I said. I was, I was hurting. And I was on the, I was on the corner. Because well, I'd be, be on, on the corner details. hustling. I'd be on the corner hustling. And they would get out of church. And be dogging big old hats on. And they ride by and they look up at me and go. And that's and not said, the church. And I said, Lord. And that's not I always tell them look at somebody and say. Gee, it just always said, you know, God love you. What? I'm just looking for love anyway. Mm -hmm. What? God love me. So you mean to tell me? Okay. So when when it was time to go back in there and train the child, I was like, I don't want to help this. No, I want to. I was like, God, come on. He said, this ain't about you. And that's what he do. But why should I help this? That's what he do. They help me. You know, that's how you feel. You know, you like, but. That's what what he he is. Everybody, everybody, everybody in addition to in addition to God is different. It God wins us all different ways. So it wasn't for them to help me. God knew it was set time. Right. He was gonna, he was but they want me. the church. But that is not God. But the church, the the church is not the four wall. Mm -mm. It's it is you. not. It is the people. You're supposed to take the church out here to the people. Mm -hmm. That's the that church. is it. That's the church. You when 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 you show up at Walmart, the Ark of the Covenant showed up at Walmart. Mm -hmm. uh, something should shift. Something should change. Right. Everywhere we go, That's something correct. should. Because we're the church. That's we're, correct. We're, we're, we're the pre His presence lives in us. Yeah. So, but and so let's get to this other part of it. So we getting ready to wind things up. I know y'all. Y'all all right, because y'all know these podcasts can go forever. But let me, <laughs> let me just let me. Let, we're gonna try to wind up a little bit. Okay. So. Pastor Stephanie suffered with depression, anger, bullying, all these things. Now let's get to the part where tell him exactly how you found out why your mother felt the way she felt about you. Okay, well I had already known that Sylvester Johnson, shout out to CEO, he in heaven too. Um, he was not my biological father, but she married Sylvester, my daddy when i was young so that's all i knew like i didn't know that he didn't find out that i was his child till i was an adult i didn't know that though um uh, but um my mom i am my i knew who my real dad was and so he was my second cousin so what does that tell you that meant my mom and a cousin had relationship now that wasn't intentional that wasn't planned like right. after i Cause I didn't get free from but trauma. But your mom had to deal with incest. My mom, I'm getting there. Okay, uh huh. Okay. I didn't get free 
from trying to please my mama because she couldn't stand me. But I felt like, which I had to get out of that too, that if I loved her hard enough, she was going to love me wow. back. If I did enough, Ooh, that, that, that would make her love me. Mm -hmm. And so um, one day, Ooh. I was not in a good place. And one, one thing, when I'm not in a good place, and people can say what they want to say and make all kind of excuses. If I'm not in a good place and if I've isolated myself, I need to be left alone. Okay, Joyce Ann wasn't leaving me alone. Joyce Ann was nitpicking. And it wasn't Joyce Ann. We know these things are spirits. And you right. could see it and I could hear it. But I kept saying, I just need you to leave me alone, baby. Mom, I just need you to leave me alone. And, and, and it wouldn't. And um, then one day it bothered me. And... I punched in the face and so I went to jail and and no I don't want to hear the oh my god you punched my mom in the face I couldn't do that these this is my story it's not your story right and um, it's all right we, but um I get tired of hearing that mm, I'm tired of hearing that and I'm tired of people acting like that we don't have issues that we got to go through and that people don't go through things that you might not endure because we act like we are so well, much we better. all did things we were but no proud. not them uh -uh. and that's my point <laughs> We all we all do something, but right. when somebody do something, they feel justified on speaking on it. Don't don't even approach me. So um, <laughs> I punched in the face, went in the holding cell. While I'm in that holding cell, I said, "You're done." I said, "You're done. You're not trying to impress nobody else. You're not trying to please nobody else. You haven't even lived your life. You forty something years old. We're not doing this. Is to no." I said, "You are going to go and do this book because I had written this book when Stel was little, and erased it." Because I saw all that stuff on there. I said, oh, we can't put that out there. Erased the whole entire book. So after I got out of jail, I couldn't go back to where I was living because it was like, it was a house, but it was like two sides. Mm -hmm. And the judge was like, but what if she feels threatened? You go outside and she's ready to call, um, you know, she called the cops, then you, you'll go back to jail. So Steph was like, she coming with me, my son. So I went over there and therapy. I began to write the book. I wrote the book. I wrote the book. I wrote the book. When I finished that book, that's when I went. And um, I went and sent it to my publisher. And I was healed. All that was off me. It, as I wrote each chapter, all that came off. Healed from that. Healed from that. And that's what some people, that's why I tell them to journal. Some people, yeah. you might have to take boxing. Some, you know what I'm saying? Whatever yeah. it does to release that off of you. But it released it off of me. And I've been free from that stuff ever since like just living in my truth what God says I am doing what he tell me to do and people got stuff to say when you live in large too I don't know but I always say something won't. I don't care about nobody saying. but that's listen, the thing though listen. I want people to shut up and listen. I want them to shut up for this reason most of the people that's talking ain't doing nothing you got you got talents that God gave you but you weren't about me and my talents this is just me on this podcast for those who listening. Leave me alone. Just, just leave me alone. Oh, wow. Because what I'm saying is the, the, the things that I went through where people wouldn't say nothing to me, wouldn't help me. And then now that I'm free, then they want to come for me. No, do the same thing that you was doing. I was hurting. Shut up. The same way. And, and, and so let me, let me ask you this. So with your, when you found out that your mom was hurt. Because every time she's seeing you, she's she seen him. She's seen her cousin. Then you knew why. I knew why. And I told her. She felt the way she did. I but said, it wasn't intentional. She right. didn't mean no No, more. no, no. They didn't, they didn't have didn't that plan that or nothing. She didn't plan to, to treat you like right. that. Right. It came from her hurt. Mm -hmm. She didn't even intend for that to happen with him. She told the whole story. I was like, that's all you had to say, ma'am. I said, but I also realized. That when she didn't, you know, talk to me, that it made me angrier. I said, so I guess it was kind of hard for you to talk to me as angry as I That's was. That's right. But, no, nah, man. And I know you couldn't tell me in the very beginning because I was a child. And so yes, as a child, yeah. I'm like, because I'd be like, why you don't like me? And she'd be like, what you mean? No, they ain't no, I ain't know what, no mean, what you mean. Because me, my child asked me, and I'd be like, oh, no, I love you very. You know what I'm saying? But see, but, but, so all of it goes back to this, y'all. We need to have communication. We do. It, when you make, when I'm you, serious. When you scare a child to the point of make a... Uh, uh, um, uh, just like I was telling you on one part of the book, I said, um, after I was raped, I couldn't go over there and tell my mom, which was across the street from mm -hmm. the house, I couldn't go tell her because she would have blamed me and that would have hurt me right, worse than the rape. Right, it would have. That would have hurt me worse than the rape. So I said, you know you what, I can't, I, I don't got nobody to go to. Gotcha. So I just be quiet. 
Gotcha. And I just and I just suffered in silence. Mm-hmm. And so I understand. Uh, I understand that. I yeah. understand that. You know the point where. Uh, when it, when you, when there's no communication, and when there is no communication, you just assume a person right. feels the way, then they don't even they don't not even feel that way. So you know that's the thing. We we we've got so much stuff going on because of lack of communication. Yeah, and like you say, I I had an incident not a while back where I couldn't uh, communicate with one of my uh, grandchildren mm-hmm. because. When that first time I did, it was a blow up like a yeah, anger yeah, like yeah. thing, and I was like, okay, I'm right. I'm finna, I, right. man, you gonna take me back somewhere I don't need to be. Right. So guess what? I ain't even gonna deal with you like that. I'm just gonna when I see someone, I'm gonna tell your parents because I right. don't have time. But and, and but made it even worse because some of the stuff that he was thinking, or I may have been thinking that he felt, or I feel probably wasn't even there. Right. We just we just want to communicate, mm-hmm. but because I seen how it happened the first time, I tried to communicate. I was like, okay, let me you not do this because, again. um, hey, yeah, 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 I'm not dead. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not dead, grown. I'm not dead. Right, chick right there. So right, let me, you I know, hey. So I had to back up, and then I said I ain't communicating with him because it's gonna take me to a bad place, and I can't afford to go. Correct. Bad. That right there. That's what I I'm can't. saying. I can't. I can't. I can't, can't too far. I can't afford to go this somewhere. Time. I can't let you take me back mm-hmm. to Egypt. Uh-uh, because cause your go-back ain't my go-back. Uh-huh. I, I can go deep. I don't want to go there. Right. Ever again in my life. Right. I don't want to have... And, then, and I, re, I remember then, the guy had to show me, I had mental issues. Now, it's bad when... It's all right. I'm telling you, when you got anger to the point that you got a mental issue, yeah. that's something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, okay, I know I had mental issues. Yeah. So I had... I had went, so, so to be... To stand where I, to be what to be who God has made me today is like, wow. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's it simply really amazing, is. and it's, so, it's such a freedom. It really is, and such a peace to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm enjoying my life mm-hmm. with God. Yes, ma'am. I ain't enjoying my life because of certain people around right. me. Right. I ain't enjoying my life because of nobody else. I'm enjoying every moment of my life right. because of my Father right. and the people He put around me. They really authentically love me. Yeah. And even love me when I'm ain't got good right. sense. Even love me when I'm hey, when I when I when I got an attitude. Yes. Even love me when I'm being sassy. Yes. They love me. And oh, see, man. and because and, I love them when they're that way like I'm like, oh, you'll be alright. Yeah. You will. <laughs> this too shall pay baby. It, 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 sure. And we laugh and go about our business That's because we're human. We're human. We're human. We human. And, 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 and we strive for perfection, but we ain't perfect. Right. But we try to mm-hmm. now. Our example is Christ, mm-hmm. so we got a lot to we got a lot to work up to. Mm-hmm. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, right, we still have to right deal with what we have on the table right now. Deal with it, right. Mm-hmm. And so this podcast today, I had to bring Pastor Stephanie back on here because I don't want you to be when you read certain part of the book. Oh, she punched the mom in the face. Oh, she did it. She did it. Oh, she wanted to kill us. Mm-hmm. And not understand that it was hurt. It was coming from a hurt, dark place. Not only was it coming from the place of her mom, because her, her mom's hurt came from a place yep. she didn't know about. Right. And then Pastor Stephanie's other hurt came from the bullying every day. She already feeling bad about herself because she yep. felt like my mama won't love me, so who, who want me anyway? Right. Who wants you if you don't think your mama or daddy wants you? And then they have to deal with all the other stuff she had to deal with. And so I want to say to you, Pastor Stephanie, a lot of people just see you on Facebook sometimes. And, and a lot of people do. Some people do know you. know you're in past and you come here with people ministry yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But to really know, know you, to really be around you, mm-hmm. Her drive, she's always working. Yeah. Her, she's always trying to see if she can help someone. She's always, uh, she's compassionate. She's she she she's she's always working on her pretty, uh, peculiar princess, peculiar princess, peculiar princess yes. modeling agency that she has, and which is doing really well. Yeah. And but she's all these different people, and um. Uh, to find out all the things that you've been through, what you had to go through to get to where you're at now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's amazing. God is true. God is good. He's good. He's he really is. He really is. He really is. Because when you start telling me some of your stuff, I was like, yeah. 
I was crazy. I didn't know she was like that for real. <laughs> no, for real. She was really like, she was like, yeah, yeah I, I was real. like, wow, that's crazy. So, Pastor Stephanie, I thank God for your growth. I mm -hmm. thank God for who you are. Uh, it's so much more to you, so much more they're going to find out, so mm -hmm. much more is coming out now that y'all don't even know about soon be coming out. And so, um, I just thank God for you. You are an uh, awesome pastor, amazing woman of God. I appreciate you. You know I do. Yes. Um, I, I miss you this week. I was like, well, I'm I like, know. I said, like, what is she at? And I ain't even heard from you. Something just kept saying, I just need to see if she all right now. And she didn't say it. And I was not talking. <laughs> 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 so I was, I was like, not. you know, let me chat. I said, God, I can't get to her to know she all right or whatever. But I tell you, um, instead of assuming, instead of judging, check on people and see how they really mm -hmm. Um. Don't just discredit people because of sometimes their actions. Because um, hurt gonna let out hurt. Yeah. And sometimes you need to get away from people until they get past it. And that's true now. Because you don't need to be nobody's that's punching true bag. Now. You don't need nobody to be nobody's verbal or abusive punching bag. Yep. Period. Till they get free, get away from them. But um, I pray in the name of Jesus. I lose Raphael healing deliverance act to touch you. That God heal you everywhere you hurt. If you dealt with abandonment issues, if you felt, if you dealt with bullying, if you dealt with any type of verbal or physical abuse, if you dealt with rage, uh, incest, anything, my our prayer for you today is that God heal you everywhere you hurt. And I am so glad y'all tuned in. And Pastor Stephanie, thank you. Oh, I want y'all to go on. I really do thank you for, for being on the podcast. I want y'all to go get this book, Therapy, not because I'm telling you to. It'll make you understand her more, mm -hmm. understand her a whole lot more. And I can understand what she's saying when she say, uh, uh, don't say nothing. Don't, don't say judge, nothing. don't call me, don't judge, don't, don't say nothing. Me. Because when somebody's when somebody get vulnerable enough to put their truth out there, the last thing they need is to be messed with. Jesus. Just read the book. If it apply to you, if it don't, Lord yeah, be right God. There. You know, she's not saying that she proud of anything she did, right. but she's letting you know her story. And if God can change her, he can change you. That's it. Right if he can change me, he can change anybody. Mm -hmm. So, y'all, thank you for tuning in. God bless you. This is Pastor Stephanie Johnson Rice. If you got kids that need to model, you just want to yes. model something, this is your go-to. Thank you. If you, wanna, if you need flyers done, if you need a book published, mm -hmm. if you need somebody to help write a book, mm -hmm. this is your go-to. She's walking me through mine. This Thank is your go-to. I'm talking about I don't have much time. <laughs> she'll get in there with me this time. You don't. And, I, and, she, and, she, and I just talk and she'll, she'll record and I just, and she'll jump at the oh. restaurant and try to get me sometime. Yes. I'm, I'm, my schedule is crazy. But she comes in when she can and we get what we can mm -hmm. done. So uh, if you need, a, if you got a book you want to get out there, she's your go-to. So thank y'all for tuning in. Pastor Debbie, thank you for who you are. Thank, thank you for what you do in my life. I truly appreciate you, and I love you, and thank you for honoring me on my past appreciation. I, I, I God bless you. So, y'all, we thank you. We'll see you next time. From Mud to the Mansion, y'all be blessed. Bye. 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 Bye.